Live from the campus of Penn State University, this is PSN News. It's Wednesday, December 7th. We have all you need to know about a proposed Center County Health Department, as well as details on a lawsuit faced by the State College Area School District. We also have more on the opening of another grocery store in Center County, along with entertainment, sports, and weather. Stay tuned. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Zachary O'Brien. And I'm Madeline Zarkowski. Center County United Way's Taste of the Town fundraising event returns this month with a new, larger location at night. For the first time, the event will be held at the Bryce Jordan Center. This allows for more tickets to the event. The United Way will host local restaurants, producers, and related food vendors. They will also grant attendees the chance to taste test menu samples from their well-known favorites. This year's event showcases more than 30 hospitality vendors. Some new vendors attending include Bonnie Blues Smokies and Sweets, Bees Knees Coffee, and many more. They will be hosting a silent auction as well. Center County United Way aims to raise $80,000 from this event, a $15,000 increase from last year's event. Profits all go to a variety of regional nonprofits. Taste of the Town will take place on Thursday, December 15th from 6 to 9 p.m. Tickets are $100 per person or $850 for a table of 10. Help raise money for organizations around State College and make sure to attend this event. A new giant food store is coming to the Belfont area. The new supermarket is set to open its doors at 8 a.m. next Friday, December 16th. The 50,000 square foot store will be the first to open in the new Paradise Shopping Center on Benner Pike. An on-site giant gas station will also be opening with the supermarket. And once open, the giant will operate from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. daily. It's expected to add more than 100 full and part-time jobs to the Center County workforce. The first 200 customers will receive a reusable giant shopping bag filled with product samples and savings on opening day. Center County administrators are thoroughly considering whether to have a countywide and state college borough health departments. This idea was first proposed during the COVID-19 pandemic as county health departments provided more health-related resources to county communities. During the pandemic, counties with individual health departments were able to start up COVID-19 testing programs quicker than counties that relied on the state. Since then, there have not been many of talks of the new health department idea. The last Thursday, Center County and State College Borough officials said, quote, we are still considering it, end quote. If the plan is approved, speculation claims that the headquarters will be located in Belfont. Currently, costs seem to be holding the go for the new project. A federal judge says that the State College Area School District violated Title IX, ruling in favor of three middle school girls who wanted to play ice hockey. A lawsuit was filed in August after the girls did not make the hockey team and were denied an additional middle school team for female players. The judge granted their request for a preliminary injunction. This requires the school district to ensure the girls would be on an ice hockey team, recruit female students, and promote female participation in its ice hockey club program. Happy Valley hasn't been shy to the rain these past few days. Can we expect to see more of it through the end of this week? Caitlin Kitch with Campus Weather Service has more details in today's weather report. Take a look. From the students of Penn State Meteorology, here is your Penn State Campus Weather Service forecast. Good evening, I'm student meteorologist Caitlin Kitch with the Penn State Campus Weather Service here with your PSN forecast. Taking a look at our live cam right now out over Beaver Stadium, we can see those cloudy skies we had earlier this afternoon persisting into our evening. Those continue as we head into the night tonight, but more on that later. Right now in State College, currently sitting at 57 degrees, so a bit above average for this time of year, but we'll take it while it lasts. The big story for the rest of this week, staying dry as of right now as we head into the day tomorrow, tomorrow. But as we head into the later portions of this week and this weekend, 
could see a chance for a transition to some more wintry weather and expect a wet weekend ahead. Temperatures across the region right now sitting in the 50s across the majority of central Pennsylvania. If we broaden our view to the rest of the state, we can see this trend continuing. Temperatures dipping down into the 40s up in the northwestern portion of the state right now. Looking at our current radar, we can see that precipitation we had earlier this afternoon made its way off to the east, seeing a bit of lingering showers currently between State College and Williamsport, but mainly dry across the rest of the state right now. As we head into this evening, those clouds I mentioned we're seeing here in State College spread the rest of the way across the state right now. These continuing as we head into the night tonight, and through the night we will see that cloud cover continuing. Uh, overcast skies for the majority of the state to start the day tomorrow. Temperatures in the lower 40s dipping down into the 30s up in Bradford to start the day tomorrow. Now as we ease through the day tomorrow, we will see a bit of clearing, mostly in the eastern portion of the state, but as we head into tomorrow evening, we'll see some spotty clouds across the majority of the state. Temperatures getting cooler. And as we head through the night to tomorrow night, we can see that clearing continue as we head through the night. Now getting into Friday morning, a dry start to the morning could see a bit of lake effect precipitation up in the northwestern western portions of the state, a bit of cloud cover, temperatures getting down into the 20s in certain areas of Pennsylvania. And if we take a look at our Euro model as we head into the later portions of this week, we'll see by the Friday, 8.30 p.m., we can see cloud cover affecting the majority of Pennsylvania. We'll start to see that precipitation moving in in the evening. Now, this is where it gets a little iffy. Uh, the southern portions of the state should expect to see rain as of right now, with a transition somewhere in the middle of the state to that wintry mix and even snow for northwestern portions of Pennsylvania. But that could change as we head into Friday. Now, heading through Friday night, we'll see that precipitation make its way across the state, clearing up by Saturday afternoon. Uh, should see some clear skies in the eastern portion of the state, but another round of clouds moving back in in western Pennsylvania. As we head through the day Saturday, we see most of the state affected by that cloud cover, and into Sunday, we'll see that precipitation return. Again, we will see a bit of rain as well as some wintry mix and snow even mixed in there. Southern portions of the state expecting rain as of right now, and northern portions of the state expected to see wintry mix and snow, but stay tuned as the forecast updates. Today in State College, expect a low of 39 degrees, those overcast skies out there continuing into tomorrow morning. And for tomorrow, mostly cloudy skies throughout the day, with temperatures topping out around 48. Looking at our seven-day forecast, as I mentioned, mostly cloudy skies tomorrow, chance for some precipitation Friday into Saturday morning, clearing out for the afternoon on Saturday, could see that transition to a wintry mix from that rain as we head into Sunday, clearing out to start the week, temperatures sitting down in the 40s. From the Penn State Campus Weather Service, I'm Caitlin Kitch. Have a great evening. Welcome back to PSN News. I'm Morgan Bull with your sports update. Penn State women's basketball fell to Minnesota this past Saturday, but it wasn't an easy win for the Gophers. The Nittany Lions went into double overtime, but ultimately lost a very close match of 96-98. to Although Penn State lost, McKenna Marisa has a lot to celebrate. She scored a career high of 34 points in a game and made a career best of seven three-pointers by the end of the match. Penn State has its next game tomorrow at 7 against Indiana in the Bryce Jordan Center. This will be the Lady Lions' second conference match of the season. On the other hand, Penn State men's basketball is currently playing its first conference match of the season against Michigan State in the Bryce Jordan Center. It has been a close game throughout the first half. During the Nittany Lions' last match on November 29th, they fell to Clemson 101-94, also after going into double overtime. However, Cameron Winter stood out on the court for Penn State as he led the team with 26 points. Jalen Pickett also stood out as he finished the game with 23 points, 8 assists, and 7 rebounds. Seth Lundy also made his mark on the court, tallying a double-double with 23 points and 12 rebounds. On Monday, the New Orleans Saints lost to a, cl a close match to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Saints ended up losing 16-17. The Saints were in the lead 16-3 until the last five minutes of the match. That's when the Buccaneers made their comeback. The Buccaneers scored a touchdown and soon after scored another, putting them in the lead by one point. This ended with a Buccaneer victory. 
Looking ahead at the NFL schedule, the Raiders will face the Rams tomorrow at 8.15 p.m. That's all for your sports update. After the break, Gabrielle Tyner has the latest updates from the entertainment world. Stay tuned. Welcome back to PSN News. I'm Gabrielle Tyner with your entertainment update. I hope you're hungry, Happy Valley. A new cheesesteak shop will be opening up in downtown State College after the winter break. Campus Steaks will be taking over the location of the former Bradley's Cheesesteaks and Hoagie's Shop on Pew Street. The shop will serve authentic Philly cheesesteaks, bringing its ingredients straight from the city of brotherly love. As their slogan says, it's a Philly thing. Numerous meat options like beef and chicken will be available along with sides like fried onions and the Lisio roll. The restaurant will offer catering, delivery, and tailgate packages, all of which will be available at late night hours. Speaking of late night hours, are you having a difficult time renting out a library pod or a classroom to study for your exams? Penn State has a temporary solution to help students cram for finals week. Penn State will be extending its hours of operation in multiple buildings on campus for students to study for finals weekend. Until Thursday, December 16th, five classrooms will be open 24 hours, seven days a week for students to use as study spaces. These spaces are located in the Buki, Hammond, Willard, Thomas, and Osmond buildings. The Hub Robinson Center will also be open 24-7 until 11 p.m. on December 16th. On a national note, Hollywood is mourning the loss of Emmy and Golden Globe award-winning actress Kirstie Alley. The 71-year-old Cheers star died Monday after losing her battle against colon cancer. Her children released a statement on tu Twitter Tuesday about their mother's passing, saying, quote, As iconic as she was on screen, she was an even more amazing mother and grandmother, end quote. At the time of her death, Allie was undergoing treatment for her cancer at the Moffitt Cancer Center in Florida. Many celebrities like John Travolta and Jamie Lee Curtis took to Instagram to express their grief over the loss of their friend. Statements said she was, quote, one of the most special relationships I've ever had, end quote. End quote, a beautiful mama bear in her very real life, end quote. That's all for your entertainment update. After the break, interview anchor Joseph Dorman will be speaking to Jesse Evans, the executive event director of Relay for Life. Stay tuned. Welcome back to PSN News. I'm Joseph Dorman. Alongside me is Jesse Evans, executive event director of Relay for Life. Jesse, thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having me. So what, for those unfamiliar, what exactly is Relay for Life? So Relay for Life is a part of a national organization where we fundraise throughout the year for the American Cancer Society for cancer treatment and cancer research. Mm -hmm. So how long have you not only been a member of the board, but been a part of the organization? So I just took over as executive event director this year. Um, last year, I was the entertainment overall for our committee, and um, I was a committee member my mm -hmm. freshman year. Now, Relay for Life is known for, you know, local walks and events, stuff like that. But what are some things that Relay for Life does that, you know, that benefit cancer patients that, that people may not know about? So one thing that I think is really special that we do is we always make holiday cards for survivors at this time of year. Um, something else that we do in the spring is we make um, little care packages with some candy and like some well wishes and things like that for cancer patients at local hospitals. Mm -hmm. Um, and pretty much any time that they need words of encouragement, we send it their way. Hmm. So do you guys do, do more things around Christmas time, would you say? Um, I would say it's probably about a 50-50 split. Our main event is in April, so we do a lot around that time. But everybody always likes to hear something encouraging around the holidays, so we try to keep it evenly split throughout mm -hmm. the year. So you, you benefit the American Cancer so so Society, is that correct? Yes. So you have that, but Relay for Life is notably a, has a large presence at Penn State. Why do you, why do you think that is? Um, I would say that Penn State is very well known for all the philanthropy they do. Obviously, mm -hmm. we have THON, but there's a lot of other organizations that do philanthropy, too. Um, it's just a very giving community and wants to help out people whenever they can. So I feel like that really helps make Penn State a good place for Relay for Life to be. Mm -hmm. so, so sort of adding on to that, what are some Penn State-specific events that, that you can recall? 
Um, some of the things that we've done throughout the year, um, various fun restaurant fundraisers, we've done um, date auctions, we do 5Ks, um, pretty much anything to get our name out there and mm -hmm. get the community involved and know what our event is. And how frequently do you put on these these events for students to attend? Um, I would say we try to have one big fundraiser a month, um, so like a 5K or the date auction or something like that. And then we have other online fundraisers and restaurant fundraisers sprinkled in throughout as well. So minimum of once a month. Mm -hmm. So how has your life not only been affected by, by being a member of the board, but also just being in the organization and, and participating in these these philanthropy events? Yeah, sure. Um, so I have always been somebody that likes to help out others. So by being a part of Relay for Life, it allows me to give back to others. I unfortunately know a lot of people who've been affected by cancer. Mm. So it's my way of kind of like giving back to them for those that aren't still here. Um, and also it's allowed me to develop some really close friendships. Um, obviously coming to college is always a hard transition, especially with my freshman year when we had all the COVID restrictions. So by being a part of Relay for Life, it allowed me to kind of meet some new people, get out there, um, and I'm still friends with all the people that I met freshman year. Mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned it's uh, similar to Thawne in, in, in that you, you do, you've to benefit for cancer survivors. How would you say it's it's different? So one thing that I like to stress that's different is THON is specifically for pediatric cancer and we are for all different types of cancer, any mm -hmm. type of cancer that exists. Um, something else that I think is different about that is that THON fundraises for the Four Diamonds, so Hershey, Ch Hershey Medical Center, um, and ours could be going to anywhere, mm -hmm. wherever it's needed um, across the country. That's awesome. Uh, so lastly, if someone is you know interested in, in joining you guys and, and joining your mission, uh, how can they get involved like you? Okay, sure. So um, there's two different ways you can get involved. You can get involved by going to psurelay.org and registering to make a team. Um, but you can also go to our Instagram at PSU Relay for Life and um, fill out an application in our link tree and become an internal relay member like me. That's awesome. Thank you. Well, uh, you know, Jesse, thanks for coming in here and spending time with me and uh, us this evening. Now stay tuned because after the breaks, Zachary and Madeline will be right back with the latest news from across the nation. Stay tuned. Many Hawaii residents on the Big Island are bracing for a major upheaval if lava from the Mauna Loa volcano slides across a key highway. The major road is the quickest route from either side of the island. If the lava does in fact cross that highway, it could add multiple hours to residents' planned escape routes. The slowly moving flow was coursing about 2.7 miles from the road on Friday. Frank Manley, a licensed practical nurse whose commute is already an hour and 45 minutes, said he would have to get up at 3 a.m. to reach work at 8 a.m. Residents hope that lava does not reach the road, but if it does, Hawaii U.S. Representative Ed Case sent a letter to President Joe Biden saying he would need to send immediate help. Residents of Hawaii are continuing to remain safe and optimistic about this whole event. Tennessee Governor Bill Lee plans to make express toll lanes on highways and triple a fee for electric car owners. The annual fee for owning an electric car in Tennessee is $100, which would be raised to $300. He doesn't want to raise the gas tax or add fully tolled roads, but Tennessee's current road funding is through gas taxes. It's looking less reliable as more people are switching to fuel efficient and electric cars. With Tennessee's rapid growth and truck traffic, transportation officials estimate $26 billion in projects are needed to address the worsening congestion. President Joe Biden signed legislation to block a national railroad strike that could have devastated the American economy. The United States Senate voted 80 to 15 last week to impose a tentative contract deal reached in September. A dozen unions representing the about 150,000 railroad workers who could have gone on strike on December 9th. The Senate failed to approve a measure allowing workers paid sick leave, causing the strike. Biden said it was a tough decision, but thought it was the best one for the working families and the country's economy around the holidays. If a strike had happened, it could have frozen almost 30 percent of U.S. cargo shipments, caused the American economy nearly $2 billion, and left passengers stranded. The Supreme Court heard oral arguments today in the major elections case Moore v. Harper. At first read, it appears as a simple redistricting case. But the ruling on this case could determine how much power state legislators have over congressional and presidential elections. 
A ruling in favor of North Carolina's legislator today could grant state lawmakers across the country more power to set election regulations. That could have major implications for the 2024 presidential election. A decision should follow in the coming months. That concludes our show tonight at PSN News. Be sure to check us out on Twitter and Facebook at PSN News, on Instagram at Penn State Network News, and to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash PSN News. Have a good night and stay safe, Penn State.